But we're going to be talking about my relationships. Those of you who've been coming to this church for a number of years, you know that it's a major part of what we do here, of our calling uh, or our assignment. And um, I told you, I promised you the other time, that we came off a particular schedule, and I'm going back to it in another way. And so this is like the second of, of more to come in, in the future. But you'll be blessed. Blessed. Tonight, today I'm going to be talking about four foundations, four pillars of a healthy marriage. Four pillars of a healthy marriage. In fact, these pillars I'm talking about is for marriages, but it's for relationships generally. It's to do with friendships. It's to do relationship in church. If you apply them, it will work for you. It will bless you. Amen. First of all, I want to bring your attention to a series that Jane and I did several, about two years ago. I called it, and they lived happily ever after. And in it, I taught a little bit of what I'm going to share with you today. And you know that statement, that phrase, and they lived happily ever after. I pulled it out of, you know, the different books that we read when we were kids. You know, the frog, yeah, fairy tales, frog prince, um, Cinderella, uh, who else? Snow White. You know, after the frog, the princess kicked, kissed the frog, uh, then he turned into a prince and then he married her and then they, they rode off into the sunset. Uh, and then they, it comes at the bottom and they live happily ever after the end. You and I know that that's not the end. It's just the beginning. It's true. Do you know what? But as we laugh, the truth is this. We believe it. Yes, we do. Because, you see, you will pray for your friend, that single friend. You will pray for them. You will fast. You will stand with them. You will sometimes try to introduce them to people. You do all that. And then suddenly, one day, one of them oh, comes to tell you, oh, I think that, you know, Johnny and, Johnny and I, you know, we, we're going to get married. Then you go, oh, thank you, Jesus. Then in your prayer uh, list, you cross it. That's done. Johnny and Josephine worked out. Okay, let's go to James now. Let's see how. So you start praying for James. Especially when they, they walk through the aisle and, or whatever, get to the registry office, whatever way, the path they chose. And the, the moment that is sealed, you watch them, you say, praise the Lord, it is done. So you, you get the next person, James. Because in our mind, we think that the pastor, the minister, the registrar saying that they are man and wife is the end. They are married now. They will live happily ever after. That's a joke. That's a, the biggest lie ever, if you believe that. Now, we want them to live happily ever after. And guess what? It can be happily ever after. It can be. Because, you see, let me show you what. The closest... You And one day, when you get to heaven, you will look for me on, on um, Angelic Avenue, house number 305. And you come say, what you said was true when you get there. Because the closest, let me tell you, the closest you will get to of, of, of appreciating what heaven will be like is being in a healthy marriage. I'm telling you the truth. God, God created marriage for you to have a little bit of heaven on earth. You say, pastor is not in the word of God. It is. The Bible says you will taste the powers that are to come. Heavenly powers in your relationship. Or, when you flick it around, the closest to hell you ever get as a child of God also is in a bad marriage. If you want to know how hell is like. It's true. Amen. Amen. But I'd rather have heaven on earth. <laughs> Trust me. So you could have such a marriage that when one day as a child of God. Now you ain't going to heaven because you came to church. You only go to heaven because you received Jesus. So as a child of God, when you get to heaven one day, you say, oh, I experienced some of this whilst I was on earth. Why? Because you got it from 
that happy, harmonious, healthy relationship you were in with that person. And it comes by applying the principles of the word of God. And you will be surprised how ignorant some Christians are. Dangerous. Dangerous. Some, some Christians think, think that because, I'm telling you, you'll be sorry, forget about Christians. I've seen men and women of God who preach the gospel who think that they will have a good marriage if, if only they can get a particular minister with a certain kind of anointing to pray for them, lay hands on them when they, they come and receive, um, or sorry, when they come to be joined as husband. If we can only have this minister there and he lays hands on us and prays over us, then our marriage will work. You know something? Find me that minister because I also want to go and see him. Me. Find me him. Amen. I will pay if there is anybody like that. It's the biggest lie ever. I don't care if at your marriage ceremony they lined up the Pope, the Archbishop of York, the one of England, and every Archbiscuit, no, Bishop, <laughs> that there is. And they anointed you with a tank of oil. All that will happen is that you'll find it very hard to get a hold of your wife because she'll be so slippery. I mean, you will, you, listen, listen, you know, this, you'll be shocked. You will be shocked when you listen to Christians, especially when it comes to relationships. Hmm? See, with me, I tell you the truth. I will not lie to you. Some people think, oh, you know, maybe we're having problems because if we didn't go to church to get married. I know a whole bunch of folks who got married in the registry. You're still married, happy. It's not about going to church. It's about setting principles. And you see, a principle will work for you, whether you're black, white, brown, whatever you are. Whether you're in Africa or you're in Europe or America, South, anywhere, Japan. You know what? When you jump off a skyscraper in New York, where will you head? <laughs> are you sure? Yeah, you're coming down. <laughs> if you jump off a skyscraper in Africa, <laughs> praying in the spirit, fasting, you come down quicker. <laughs> yeah, you're coming down. Because there is a principle, a law called gravity. So I don't care, you could have sought the Lord the whole month and jumped off a skyscraper in Tokyo. Brother, you are dead. Why? Because it's a principle. White man will die. Black will die. Brown will die. Red, all will die. Why? Because there's a principle that works. If you get on the wrong side of it, it will kill you. If you get on the right side of it, gravity is good. The only reason why I'm standing here and you're sitting down is because gravity holds us together. You catch what I'm trying to say? So it's not bad. Gravity, we need gravity. Unless you operate a higher law called the law of lift and thrust. That's why people can fly in aeroplanes because it over supersedes that law. So laws are not wrong. All you do is get on the right side. It will work for you. If you... You stick your hand, if you stand in a bucket of water and you switch the socket on and you stick your fingers in, I'm not recommending it, even not for practice, don't do this at home. And you stick your fingers in, guess what? It will fry you. But if you put your sound system in at Christmas and plug it and switch it on, you're boogieing because it gives you music. The same thing that will kill will give life. So it's not about witches. Okay, I'm not saying I don't believe in what I'm trying to say. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't believe there's witchcraft. I know there is. But all that nonsense, every time shoving stuff onto some witch, shoving stuff onto some mother-in-law, shoving stuff onto your finances and stuff like that is a bunch of bull. Bunch of bull. 
He said, my pastor, you don't understand. It was our mother-in-law who broke. No, you broke your own marriage. Look at me. You broke your own marriage. You did. Not your mother-in-law. I know, yeah, she's got a big mouth and she's, she's trouble. But you broke your own marriage. Nobody can break your marriage unless you allow it. Otherwise, every marriage that has a so-called mother-in-law should go under. Remember what I said about gravity? If everybody, you jump up, you're coming down. So what was the finances? When was credit crunch? That's when I married. No, 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 no. Don't give me that. Because then it means everybody going through a financial challenge. What I'm trying to say, every married couple going to must have their marriages broken. I, you, you go to places like Somalia and all kinds of places where they are going through all kinds of, I'm telling you, forget about crunch. You, you get something to crunch. They don't even have that. Hmm? They should be having marriage failures on mass. But it doesn't work like that. It is what you permit. It's what you permit. So the responsibility, watch this, watch my fingers. See where the responsibility is? Where? You. If people will stop putting responsibility, it's him, it's that. It's because he went here, went to, no! Do this. That's where healing begins. Trust me. And you see, Jane and I, we sit at the place where we, we pick up casualties. See, casualties of breakdowns and divorces and stuff like that. It's not a pretty sight. So, Dawn, if you got a marriage that is working even half, one quarter, fun it and get it moving in the right direction. It's better. I don't want you to stay in a marriage. When I say I don't want you to stay in a marriage, I'm not saying go quit your marriage. I'm trying to say I don't want you to stay in a marriage in terms of in the stale state in which it's in. That's why I'm teaching these things. But if you don't do what I'm teaching, you'll be there and it'll be worse. Hmm? Because the Bible says that to him who has ears to hear, much will be given. He said to him who has not ears to hear, that which even he has will be taken away. What, who takes it away? God? No, Satan. Because when you are given truth, then now you are, are a possessor or you become responsible for the truth. If you didn't know, fine, we'll let you off. But when you know, you become an open target to use it or be used. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because now the devil will know you are armed. Before you are not. So it will be unfair to attack you in that area. But now you are armed. He says, I'm coming for you. You better stick your gun ready for him when he shows up. Are you listening to me? All right. So we are going to look at a few things. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and then we'll go into. So four foundations for a healthy marriage. All right. Or relationship. Turn with me into the book of Philippians and chapter number three. Philippians chapter three. Thank you. Today. This is so important. This is so important, what I'm teaching today. So, so important. Philippians in chapter 3, are you here? Are you there? I'm reading from the Amplified. I read from verse number, I'm just going to read verse number 12. I believe just number 12. I don't think I'm going to do, maybe just 12. Watch this. Not that I have now attained this ideal or have already been made perfect, but I press on to lay hold or grasp and make my own that for which Christ Jesus, the Messiah, has laid hold of me and made me his own. Amen. Amen. Verse 13 says, I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet, but one thing I do is my one aspiration for getting what lies behind.